Freedom of thought, conscience, belief and expression are among the most fundamental of human rights. Without these rights being respected, we cannot effectively exercise other human, civil and political rights. Most religious people already recognise this when it is applied to their own beliefs. They want to protect their own right to freedom of religious belief, but they often do not recognise that this right also protects atheistic beliefs. Article 18 of the United Nations Covenant on Civil and Political Rights guarantees the right to freedom of conscience. The United Nations has what they call general comments, which explain in more detail specific rights. And General Comment 22 covers Article 18 of this covenant. And it says Article 18 protects theistic, non-theistic and atheistic beliefs as well as the right to not to profess any religion or belief. The terms belief and religion are to be broadly construed. Article 18 is not limited in its application to traditional religions or to religions and beliefs with institutional characteristics or practices analogous to those of traditional religions. The committee therefore views with concern any tendency to discriminate against any religion or belief, and the belief part is non-religious, for any reason. This is a very important principle. Atheist advocacy groups should always highlight it when we are combating religious discrimination and prejudice against us, especially when it is our own governments that are discriminating against us. By highlighting this principle, we are not saying that atheism is a religion, and we are not saying that atheistic beliefs are similar to religious beliefs. Atheistic beliefs are typically based on what we experience in the real world in which we actually live, while religious beliefs are typically based on imagined revelations from imagined supernatural realms. What we are saying is that the right to hold any fundamental worldview, whether it is religious or atheistic in nature, is equally protected under international human rights law. And states that sign up to the United Nations Human Rights Treaties are obliged to protect equally the right to hold any of these worldviews, religious or atheistic, without being discriminated against, as long as you are not infringing on anybody else's rights. We in Atheist Ireland always take part when the United Nations is questioning Ireland about its human rights treaties, also the Council of Europe and the OSCE about our human rights record. We make written submissions to these international regulatory bodies. We attend the sessions and we lobby members of the Human Rights Committees. And we would encourage all atheist advocacy groups to do the same when the UN Human Rights Committee is questioning your country. And we would be happy to assist any groups in understanding the process for doing so if you haven't already done it. Now, there are very good reasons to believe that atheistic beliefs are more reliable than religious beliefs in determining what is most likely to be true. Faith and personal experience are the worst and the least reliable ways of identifying what is true. They result in different people coming to different beliefs about the same reality. But when we apply reason to evidence, it is the most reliable way because it can more reliably result in different people coming to the same beliefs about the same reality. We'll never reach the ultimate truth, but we'll move closer and closer to it more reliably, in particular by using the scientific method. And when we apply reason to evidence, unlike religious faith and personal experience, we notice that the idea of a God seems implausible. The idea of a pure mind without a body that cannot exist without a body or a brain or energy. 
We notice that reality and morality seem as they would expect to be if there was no God and not as they would expect to be, as we would expect them to be if there was a God. We see a vast universe based on scientific laws, not on theocratic decrees, with a hundred billion galaxies, each of which contains a hundred billion stars like our sun, and the idea that this was created for the benefit of human beings on planet Earth seems extraordinarily ardent. And we see a morality evolving in the brains of social animals, based on empathy and compassion, and fairness and justice and cooperation and reciprocity. And we see humans being able to refine that morality because of our ability to reason. And we also notice that there is a relentless pattern of natural explanations taking over from previous supernatural explanations of both reality and morality. So there are very good reasons to believe that atheistic beliefs are more reliable than religious beliefs. But that is not the reason that we should insist that our right to hold our atheistic beliefs should be protected. Indeed, we should also protect the right of religious people to hold their religious beliefs, even though we believe them to be mistaken, as long as they are not infringing on the rights of other people. And there are two reasons for that. One is that we should always be willing to constantly test our own beliefs rationally, and we should always be open, in principle at least, to changing our beliefs if we get new evidence, even if we can't imagine what that new evidence might be. And secondly, if the rights to thoughts, conscience, belief and expression are indeed fundamental rights, then we should protect equally the rights of those with whom we disagree. Again, with the important proviso that the rights to freedom of belief does not extend to carrying out actions that infringe on the rights of others. The right to believe in a God does not grant you the right to indoctrinate other people into those beliefs. It does not grant you the right to prevent people from criticising or ridiculing those beliefs, or to treat women as second-class citizens, or to prevent people from consensually exercising their sexuality, or to have any other privileges over other citizens. The right to freedom of belief belongs to you, not to your beliefs. We can respect your right to hold your belief without respecting the content of your belief. And if your belief causes you to infringe on the rights of others, then you have moved beyond the right to freedom of belief and into forbidden territory. The key to protecting equally the rights to freedom of thought, conscience, belief and expression is to campaign for the complete separation of church and state. And on this issue, we can form alliances with some religious people who also support separation of church and state. For example, in Ireland, on the issue of secular schools, Atheist Ireland works alongside the Evangelical Alliance of Ireland and the Ahmadiyya Muslim Community of Ireland to seek an end to all religious discrimination and indoctrination and privilege in Irish schools. We are three groups with very different worldviews. And we disagree with each other about the truth of our worldviews. But we all agree that the state should remain neutral between religious and non-religious worldviews. And in particular should not be funding the Catholic Church as it does in Ireland to run 90% of our state-funded schools and to give them exemptions from our equality laws that allow them to discriminate on the grounds of religion against parents, students and teachers. The Ahmadiyya Muslims in particular face a double discrimination. Sunni Muslims persecute them around the world and murder them, saying that they are not proper Muslims. And many Western societies assume that all Muslims are the same and blame Ahmadis for the religious fundamentalism of some Sunnis. Our three groups are also preparing a joint submission to the United Nations Human Rights Committee for when it is questioning Pakistan later this year. We will be able to raise together 
the scandal of religious persecution of atheists, Christians and the Mahdi Muslims in Pakistan. And we will be able to give voice to members of our respective communities in Pakistan who are living in Pakistan but who cannot come forward themselves and speak out because of fear of further persecution. One of the most high profile cases is that of Asiya Bibi, a Christian woman facing execution by hanging for a dispute among neighbours that was transformed into a blasphemy allegation. Two politicians spoke out in her favour, the governor of Punjab, who was a Muslim, and the minority minister in the government, who was a Christian. Both of them were murdered. One of them murdered by one of his own bodyguards. Also recently in Pakistan, mobs have attacked and destroyed Ahmadiyya Muslim mosques, and the government has used its counter-terrorism department to raid offices and printing presses of the Ahmadiyya community. Atheists and apostates in Pakistan face similar, if not worse, persecution. Three weeks ago, a High Court judge said that blasphemers are terrorists during a case aimed at blocking social media pages from criticising Islam. And we work in Ireland and internationally to protect ex-Muslims who face persecution from Pakistan and other, go and other governments. So Atheist Ireland, the Evangelical Alliance of Ireland and the Ahmadiyya Muslim community are working together to promote freedom of thought, conscience, belief and expression, both in Ireland and internationally, despite our very different worldviews on religious and atheistic issues. And that type of cooperation on the specific issue of separation of church and state is the most promising route to having all of our fundamental human rights respected. Thank you very much.